If you've ever heard Charlie Brown's teacher speak, then you know the importance of the trombone in history. However, the trombone has a much deeper history, a surprising amount of variations, and a simplistic design which has made it a trademark instrument of music performances. The trombone may have existed as early as the 14th century, but the earliest surviving specimens only date back to 1551. In its earliest forms, the trombone was known by many names in different countries. In Italy, in 1439, the words tromba and own were combined to make the word trombone. In England, in 1495, the trombone was referred to as the sackbut. Germany also mentioned a slide instrument in 1363 called the passana. Although these names refer to slide instruments, they may not be the same as today's trombone. Like the name of the trombone, the bill has stayed relatively similar over the centuries. In his book, The Trombone, Its Musical Environment from the Late Middle Ages through the Late Renaissance, George Bertram Lane discusses how the measurements differ between the sackbut of 1557 and the 1907 trombone. The sackbut measured in at 42 and a half inches, while the 1907 trombone measured in at 43 and a half inches. Likewise, the inner diameter of the tubing of the sackbut was in half an inch, while the trombone was 7 sixteenths of an inch. Philip Bates states in his book, The Trombone, An Outline of Their History, Development, and Construction, that some parts of the build have been, mo have been modified for quality of sound and sturdiness. In the last quarter of the 15th century, the trombone had loose stays and a very thin bell. Late in the 18th century, 300 years later, the stays were fixed tubular struts and the bell was widened. After these changes, the trombone was almost exactly like the modern model we know today. The use of the trombone also changed over the centuries, as David M. Guion notes in Performing on the Trombone, a Chronological Survey. In the late 15th century, trombone started playing with voices and soft instruments. The 16th century saw the trombone in church and court music. By the mid-17th century, there was a decline in trombone use. The 18th century brought about trombone having very little use except in German churches since they owned the trombones. The 19th century heralded a revival of the trombone in all aspects of music performance. Throughout the years, only half of the variations of the trombone have survived. There are three common types today. The most common is the tenor, which has the, most, the middlemost registry. Next, the bass, which is slightly lower than the tenor. Third is the alto, which is lighter than the tenor, but rarely has parts. Unlike their more common brethren, two variations did not make it through the 18th century. The contrabass had two cumbersome slides, making it lower than the bass, but it fell out of style quickly. The soprano, or treble, has the highest register, but also fell out of style quickly. There was an attempted revival of the soprano in the 1930s, but it was only used as a novelty instrument. There was also a brief appearance of a valve trombone, which had no slides at all, but poor tone quality and a very small dynamic range made it almost useless. Since the tenor is the most common, we'll only focus on the parts of that trombone. In The Trombone by Trevor Herbert, the parts of the modern trombone are as follows. The bell, which is where the sound comes out. The joint between the bell section and the slide section, which is just a simple screw. The counterbalance weight, which often has the maker's name stamped into it. The tuning slide, when you pull it out, the pitch is forced down, and when you push it in, the pitch is forced up. The mouthpiece, there are two slide stays, an inner slide stay and an outer slide stay. When the outer slide stay is turned, it locks into the inner slide stay so that the slide cannot move. There's the inner slide, which consists of two parallel cylinders. The slide bow, which slides onto the inner slide stay, and moving this actually changes the notes. There's a slide rest, which is a small black rubber piece on the bottom of the slide bow, which allows the player to set it up and just set the trombone there. There's also a water key next to the slide rest, also known as a spit valve, which means that you can empty out the saliva from the slide bow. There are other parts of the trombone that aren't on all trombones or are used to make new sounds. Dennis Wick addresses these parts in Trombone Technique. There are valves that can lower the sound without actually lengthening the trombone. Most common valve is the F valve, and they're behind the player's left hand to make it easy for playing. There are also three different kinds of mutes. Some of them have pieces of cork, which allow the air to flow between the mute and the bell. Others have a ring of cork, which forces the air to flow through the mute itself. And there are also bucket-shaped extensions, or bowler hat plungers, which muffle the sound completely. All mutes are either made out of fiber or metal. The history, variations, and parts of the trombone all make the trombone unique. 
The trombone has maintained its place in music by making minor changes to improve the quality instead of the aesthetics. We can expect more minor changes and add-ons that will conserve the uniqueness of the trombone while improving it at the same time.